I would like to share with you. Everybody, welcome back. Early morning crypto talk. Bitcoin Brandon from Los Angeles, California. Thank you for taking time being here on this Monday morning. Make sure you type your name where you're listening in from in the chat box and hit the thumbs up button on the YouTube channel. Let's see who do we have. We've got Linda. I had a chance to meet Linda in Seattle. Back from Seattle. Shauna Ross, Charlotte, North Carolina. Anthony Pinkston, Philly. Patty Moore, Hawaii. Stan Williams, Tampa, Florida. Benita Nunez, Pennsylvania. Christina Del Toro from Texas. Mr. Gil- Guillory. That's right, education is key. Education is everything. Rich King, Barbara Brown from Vallejo. Bethany Gibbs from Seattle. Lorna Vasquez from San Francisco, Lance Hunt, Melinda McAdams, Michael Zvink from Sweden. Good morning, good morning, everybody. As a disclaimer, I am not a licensed financial advisor to be giving financial advice. I read the news, give my opinion, share a suggestion, and it is up to you to make an informed, intelligent decision on which direction you want to move into. There's four rules I live by in the crypto space to have success. Rule number one, education is key. Education is everything. Rule number two, never invest money that you cannot afford to lose. Rule number three, always get your return on investment back as fast as possible. And rule number four, where do you see yourself in three months, six months, a year from now? What are you willing to do to make it happen? Make a decision, take action, find a vehicle like KGX, and do not get distracted. Stay focused. There's so many things out there that can distract you in the space. You cannot be a part of everything. You'll go broke doing that. This is not the shotgun approach or throwing mud at the wall and seeing what sticks. You have to do it smart. Warren Buffett doesn't invest in every single Fortune 500 company. That means you've got to say no to some great ideas sometimes. Now, this is not going to guarantee you success, but it will at least minimize your risk. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the most that we can ask for. All 
right, so let's go ahead and get things kicked off and started. You should be able to see my screen. First, I guess, official work day back. Spent the weekend in Seattle, Washington. It's the first time I've been that far northwest. I think the furthest northeast in the United States has been New York for me. Furthest north I've ever been was Sweden. <laughs> well, I was I went to Sweden before I went to Seattle. And it's funny how that happens. I haven't been to all 50 states. I think the most, I think I'm up to 28 states I visited. Maybe more, but I don't, airports don't count. You know, I got to leave the airport. So I think it's, I'm up to 28 states now. It's a big country. All right, so let's see. Uh, first thing we do is look at the market cap because I have not paid attention to this in maybe three or four days. Again, while I was up in, in Seattle, we had a Bitcoin boot camp in Seattle. I was up there with Bethany Gibbs and Linda and Albert, Rob Harris, Will Fietlin. I mean, the, I mean, I, 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 the list just goes on and on. I don't want to leave anybody else. So Let me shut up. But uh, we had a good time up there. We'll be coming back probably in August for uh, another Bitcoin boot camp. Next one up is Atlanta, Georgia. February 22nd, we will be in Atlanta for that Bitcoin boot camp. And let's see what the market's doing. 112 billion. Wow, last time I looked at this, it was 119 billion. And that was on Thursday. Last Thursday is the last time I looked at this. So the market's dropped a bit. The uh, Bitcoin dominance, 53.8%. So last time I looked, it was at 52.4%, which means uh, money, most of the money that came lost came out of the altcoin. Uh, Bitcoin is at negative 3.8%. Ripple, negative 6%. Ethereum, a big loss, negative 9%. EOS, Bitcoin Cash, double digit loss. And Bitcoin SV. This goes below $100, you want to buy. Stellar's uh, double digit loss. Binance double digit. The best performers. Are there any? Pundi X, 2.85%, even though it came, it came down, it was up even higher. So, only one that you know, pays attention to is Pundi. The other, you got stable coins, Ravane, Aurora. Uh, worst performers, Factum, negative 16%, Bitcoin Gold, Bancor, Binance Coin, Bitcoin Cash, SV, Stellar, Tron. All right, let's see what the news is talking about here. Go with, I'll start with Bitcoin Cash. Bitcoin Cash slips 11%. As crypto market starts weak, but six billion dollar loss. Now I remember last week covering this topic, and I still believe that Bitcoin is going to drop down to twenty five hundred before we see a major rally in the other direction. Good morning, Cleve, and also Shane West, Tommy, New Jersey. N.R. Brown from Atlanta. All right, the light at the end of the tunnel could be a train. Oh, that's a good analogy. The saying fits Bitcoin Cash ABC, whose market cap established a weekly high at $2.36 billion on January 24th. But at the start of this week, the cryptocurrency's cap fell to as low as $1.94 billion. At 13.54 UTC, the BCH USD pair was trading at 110.81, down 11% on a 24-hour adjusted time frame. According to data aggregator CoinMarketCap.com, the service also highlighted that traders exchanged large hands between Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin on L Bank and P2P B2B. Both of them, of uh, peer-to-peer and business-to-business, both of them unregulated. According to charts available at Coinbase, a U.S.-based crypto, a regulated crypto exchange, Bitcoin Cash was now below its previous accumulation range. 
between the trading session of January 20th and 22nd. The 119.52 to 121.34 range had capped the downside attempts. On January 27th, bears tested the same area to extend their downside corrections. And today, they managed to puncture the said support range and establish new lows at 108.22. Technically, the coin is looking at a smaller recovery in the near term as the relative strength index aims for, for a correction above 30. The crash of Bitcoin Cash came as a part of an overall negative sentiment in the cryptocurrency market. As of 1400 UTC, the industry's combined loss, according to 24 hour time frame, amounted to nearly $6 billion. While Bitcoin Cash led the crash with its 11% plunge, Stellar followed by dropping more than 10%. So let's see here. Unlike Bitcoin Cash, Stellar had a fundamental reason behind its dismissive performance over the weekend and today. A wallet associated with the Stellar Development Fund allegedly sent XLM tokens across the various cryptocurrency exchanges. It led to a rumor saying that the core team was dumping their pre-mined XLM holdings. True or not, the news managed to shake trading sentiment for the coin. That means I'm going to buy me some Stellar. The, though the price performance of Stellar was strikingly similar to Bitcoin Cash, according to Binance, the XLM also broke below a critical support range. However, unlike Bitcoin Cash, the RSI and Stellar hourly chart is already recovering from its oversold territory. See, yeah, see? That's why that's why you want to buy. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Barbara can't hear me. Can the rest of you guys hear me? All right, that's just Barbara. <laughs> I'm using my crypto phone, so I should be good. There should be no drop calls on this one. I love this. I love this phone. I tested it out, by the way, in Seattle. Same result. It works better than my normal phone. And I don't have to pay a phone bill for this. That just really trips me out. Anyways, losses everywhere. Other top cryptocurrencies fell similar to Bitcoin Cash and Stellar. But their losses were comparatively lower. Ethereum and Tron. For instance, plunged inside the range of 6 to 7%, according to a 24 hour adjusted time frame. At the same time, Bitcoin, EOS, and Ripple dropped between 3 to 4%. Bitcoin SV, on the other hand, was the third worst performing top cryptocurrency. According to CoinMarketCap.com, the BSV USD rate dropped more than 8% in the past 24 hours. Bitcoin SV and Bitcoin Cash ABC were born out of November 2018's controversial Bitcoin Cash fork. You know who's been quiet? Either he's been quiet or I haven't been looking at the right sources to see his name pop up is Craig Wright. You know, the self-proclaimed Satoshi Nakamoto. And he was very vocal in November and December. He's been quiet in January. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Sometimes you, you want to hear the dog bark so you know where the dog is. Understand what I'm saying? But when he's quiet, he's up to something. That's like my kids. When my kids are real little, when I hear them playing and making noise in the other room, I, you know, I know what they're doing. But all of a sudden, when it gets quiet, something's up. They're into something they shouldn't be. <laughs> and sure enough, they are. <laughs> All right. Next up, let's talk about Dow futures. Bitcoin price dive as bears butcher markets. The weekly U.S. stock market trading session hasn't even officially opened yet. But the bears are already holding the bull's feet to the fire in both the traditional and cryptocurrency market, with Dow futures flushing a triple-digit decline and the Bitcoin price slipping below support at 3500 You know what? I need to look at this more closely. Let me take a look at the Poloniex chart here. I want to see the buy wall and the sell wall. Well, they haven't changed this chart yet. I don't like this chart. Not because it has better features than the old one, 
it's just my eyes are used to looking at the old one and I hate I, I gotta learn something new. 34 15 is the last price. 24 hour low was 33.82. Down negative four percent right now. High was 35.71. I am kicking myself a week ago. I said it when the price was at 37.10. I was like, yeah, I'll wait till it goes to 3,800, then I'll move it into tether. It'll get 3,800. <laughs> no, no, it didn't. It just dropped ever since. And I just rolled all the way down. Had I moved it to Tether, I would have saved myself a whole lot of money right now and then come back in when it gets below 2000 I mean, uh, 3000 Anyways, let's see this wall here. Yeah, this is on the Poloniex chart. So the buy wall bottom right now is at about 33.75. The sell wall is at 34.59. So we're kind of at the top of the sell wall. It might bounce down more. Uh, let's see. Yeah, everything's leaning down. Is the whale still active on this board? Yep, 35 Bitcoin. Buy order at 33.92. And over here, 3434. $120,000 are working with. So selling at 3434 and then going to buy it. At thirty three ninety two, you see how they do how he, this this guy does it or the bot is doing it, making money no matter what the price of Bitcoin is. Doesn't matter how high or how low. All that matters is the volatility, and this volatility that is a forty point swing. Buy sell buy sell and it's constantly adjusting itself. I find that interesting. I don't know if that's controlled by Poloniex themselves manipulating this chart or a bot i don't know i'm gonna have to look at the other exchange to see if i can see a similar pattern all right let's go back to the article dow takes steep losses as u.s china trade war and government shutdown bite back as of 8 32 a.m eastern time on monday that was about four hours ago dow jones industrial average futures had declined by 193 points to 0.78%, implying an opening bell loss of 200 points. S&P 500 and NASDAQ futures were also in the red. Now that's interesting. I mean, the government opened on Friday, so the markets were closed. So today, you would think that the markets would react to that good news and be in the positive that the government's back open, but it, had, that it didn't happen. But the other two major U.S. stock market indices taking losses of 0.58% and 0.66% respectively. All three indices had posted significant gains on Friday, propelling the stock market to its fifth consecutive weekly gain following December's monster sell-off. The Dow ended the day up 184 points, while the S&P 500 and NASDAQ plowed toward gains of around 1%. Movements sparked by the surprise compromise that bought a brought a temporary end to the 35-day partial U.S. government shutdown. However, President Donald Trump threw cold water on that rally on Sunday, telling the Wall Street Journal that a second shutdown is certainly, ah, man, come on, Trump. Even if it's an option, don't say it. The market was rallying on Sunday. Uh, certainly, I personally, I doubt the government's going to shut down in three weeks, no matter what happens. If if the Democrats compromise and give money for the wall, the government stays open. If Trump compromises and takes money to do all the other stuff, besides just a wall, the government stays open. If that does not happen, I think Trump's going to declare a state of emergency which will keep the government open, and then he'll use emergency funds and build the wall. So I, r right now, I can care less about the wall. It ain't about the wall. I want the government to stay open one way or another. So I don't think that 
it, it will be politically suicidal to shut the government down again in three weeks. I, I, I just don't see that. There's too many. We, we felt what a 35 day shutdown looks like. LaGuardia closed. I almost couldn't come to Seattle. I had to deal with a wife and a mother that was on my back for 24 hours not to get on the plane because they thought that air traffic controllers wouldn't be monitoring the skies. My plane might crash or whatever. And it didn't help that it was all over the news all day Thursday. And then on Friday, when I had a layover in San Francisco, I mean, Sacramento, and it comes out that LaGuardia shut down because they felt for uh, safety, it didn't have enough air traffic controllers. Of course, my mom blowing me up there. Come to turn around. Come back, get just get on the train or get on the bus and come back. <laughs> so, nah, I don't I don't need the government shutting down. I'm trying to get to Atlanta. Anyways, just by Trump saying that it's an option, uh, the uh, rally stopped. Congress fails to pass a spending bill that includes his desired 5.7 billion for the border wall. Also empowering the Bears is a disastrous earnings report from Caterpillar, which on Monday announced quarterly earnings of just 255 versus 299 that analysts had expected. Hmm. Caterpillar shares plunged more than 6% in pre-market trading, intensifying the Dow's decline since the industrial giant is considered a canary in the coal mine for the ongoing U.S.-China trade war. You, did you guys see that report? I got to go find it. In Chi- it was, I think it's in China that they are shutting down all their coal plants to make way for renewable energy. See, and, and, and that, that's going to present a problem for, for even Trump. You know, we are in a technological age now. That old way of doing things is is not going to work anymore. We want coal jobs back. You know, the instead of saying we want coal jobs back, we should say we want jobs. There's a difference. The coal's not coming back, but we can put our energy in providing areas where those coal jobs can re- be replaced with other jobs of equal value or more. And if China is doing this, then it's going to be very, very difficult around the world. The rest of the world is going to keep up, keep up pace with them. Bitcoin price careens below support. The cryptocurrency market, although largely disinterested in the government shutdown, U.S.-China trade war and other geopolitical concerns mimic the carnage seen on Wall Street. I saw another report when I was at the airport that uh, people from crypto are moving their funds into gold. It's a, so they're using the gold also as, as tether, for example, because they're not sure what's going to happen next. The move was important since 3500 has served as a support level for Bitcoin. However, technical analysts defer on the significance of that support level breach. Longtime Bitcoin bear Mark Dow said the cryptocurrency's recent movements remind him of when its price held steady near 6500 for several weeks before experiencing a sharp plunge. Based on the pattern, odds are we get a similarly, similarly sharp drop again soon. May even have started tonight. On the other hand, Maddie Greenspan, a senior market analyst at eToro, argues that while 3500 represents an interim support level, the Bitcoin price has not broken out of the larger 3000 to 5000 range in which it has traded for the last several months. The crypto asset movement today is nothing more than technical. There's no need for overreaction here, he said in the market commentary shared with CCN. Bitcoin is continuing to trade within the core area of support between 3,000 and 3,500, within the broader range of 3,000 to 5,000, where it's been since November 2018. He said, the market continues to adopt a wait and see mentality while we await the next catalyst to send prices in a firm direction. 
amidst a number of recent false starts, it remains to be seen where this impetus will come from. Looking ahead, the continued development of the industry will surely throw up a new development soon. Altcoin bleed as Bitcoin consolidates market share. As tends to be the case, the sell-off rocked the altcoin markets even harder than Bitcoin. The Ripple price dropped 5.7%, while Ethereum crashed 8.5%. The bloodbath was so great that U.S. pegged stablecoin Tether with a circulating market cap of $2 billion now ranks as the fifth largest crypto. Did it? I missed that. Let me look. Yeah, wow. Tether's number four. It's still holding at a dollar. Remember, maybe five months ago, they said Tether is done and gone because it got to 93 cents. It's right there, 101. Wow, $2 billion market cap puts it in fourth. This is buying season. Slipping below Tether was Bitcoin Cash, whose 9.5% haircut dropped its price to $111. Other major cryptocurrencies taking steep losses include Tron, Stellar, and Bitcoin SV. As of time of writing, the crypto market cap stood at $113.3 billion or less, depending on how you calculate the circulating supply of Ripple. At 53.6%, Bitcoin's market share currently sits at its highest mark since mid. December. I, I'm still say it's going to go below 3,000. That's what I'm saying. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> All right, last up, let's go with geopolitical news. Iran said to announce crypto real this week. Italy closer to crypto regulation. Post that. Hello, Gina, Court Gomes, Anissa, Lashana, about to get paid, Robinson. You look at your green back office yet? <laughs> In this edition of the Daily, Iran is reportedly re preparing to announce its national cryptocurrency during a conference starting on January 29th. As a draft decree introducing legal definitions for terms related to cryptocurrencies has been introduced, in the Italian Senate, and the IMF has voiced concerns over Malta's blockchain industry while recognizing the positive growth prospects for the island nation. Iran is expected to present its state-issued cryptocurrency at the end of this month, the digital coin, meant to help the Islamic Republic circumvent U.S. sanctions, is likely to be announced during the annual Electronic Banking and Payment Systems Conference, which begins this Tuesday, January 29th. In Tehran, this year's two-day forum will be held under the slogan, Blockchain Revolution. Interesting. Blockchain Revolution in Tehran, Iran. Iranian authorities stepped up the plan to develop a sovereign cryptocurrency. Why? After President Trump's administration pulled out of the nuclear deal, and reimposed sanctions last summer. In November, the country's central bank was cut off from the international banking network SWIFT. Additional measures to restrict its access to the U.S. currency were introduced. Shortly after, major crypto exchanges stopped offering services to Iranian residents. Oh, I didn't know that. They must have been those that are registered in the United States, so they got to follow those rules. So even on the crypto side, the major exchanges stopped doing business in Iran. According to the report, the new Iranian cryptocurrency will be rolled out in phases. Initially, a digital token backed by the national fiat, the Iranian real, okay, will be issued to facilitate payments between Iranian banks and other institutions active in the crypto space. There is also a possibility to introduce the crypto real as a payment instrument for the Iranian public at a later, later stage. Iran is believed to be working on its own version of a cross-border payment system that can be used in transactions with other countries excluded from SWIFT. During a crypto event in Yerevan in November, the Islamic Republic signed a blockchain cooperation agreement with Russia and Armenia. 
at the time, the president of the Russian Crypto Association, Yuri Pripakchkin, commented, according to our information, an active development of an Iranian version of SWIFT is currently underway. Several members of the Italian Senate have proposed a draft piece of legislation, which has been described as Rome's first attempt to legally regulate certain aspects of the industry built around cryptocurrencies. The Decreto Simplificazione has already passed two parliamentary committees of constitutional affairs and of public works, and now has to be approved by the Senate and the Chamber deputies. And you're right, Linda, how many times at the Bitcoin boot camp did we hear the word revolution when it came to crypto? And we're talking about Supreme Court justice, billionaires, government, all around the world are all saying the same thing. Here we've got Iran. They even know it's a revolution. And Iran knows about revolutions. The document introduces legal definitions for terms associated with the crypto sector, such as smart contract and distributed ledger technology. Italian media reported, and according to the decree, the country's agencia, uh, Italia Digital, must create specific technical standards these technologies will be expected to meet. The standards should be adopted within three months following the enactment of the amendments. So we've had um, the Petro down in Venezuela that was being pushed by Russia, and they were the guinea pig, the test market. We know that Russia is coming out with their ruble coin. Now we've got Iran coming out with theirs. We know the United States has been working on the Fed coin or whatever they're going to end up calling it. Ca Canada's coming out with the CAD coin. This is a sign of the times of where, where we are headed in the future. There is no escaping this. If your government says this is the new money, what are you going to do? Now, nah, I'm just going to keep using the dollar. But you can't spend it anywhere. The legislative proposal, I read that part. IMF worried about Malta's crypto industry. Why? In the past year, Malta has become a leading crypto-friendly jurisdiction in Europe, attracting some well-known companies in the sector such as Binance, OKX, ZB.com, and Bit, Bit, BitBay. Shouldn't that be BitPay? Or, okay, BitBay. Many other businesses have either opened offices or have announced plans to establish presence there. The Maltese government adopted three bills designed to regulate cryptocurrencies and related technologies in the blockchain island. That's a, that's a beautiful building. I like that color. But according to the International Monetary Fund, the growth of the industry has created significant risk. The IMF is worried that Malta's financial system can be used for money laundering and terrorism financing. Really? Okay, just stop it, IMF. There's a bank that had one branch in Europe that laundered over $200 billion. One branch. That's larger than the entire crypto market. But you're going to say, oh, oh we're concerned about money laundering. Really? In its preliminary findings, the mission has highlighted the blockchain sector, together with the financial and gaming industries, as posing threats. To anti-money laundering efforts, the strong demand for Malta's citizenship by investment scheme has been also included in the list. All these have a major source of income for the small European island nation. The IMF mission urged authorities in Valletta to ensure that companies providing services related to digital assets fulfill anti-money laundering requirements. Why don't you have your own banks do the same thing? How about, how about that? If one branch can do more than the entire crypto market cap, what do you think 100 branches are doing? You guys remember at the Bitcoin boot camp, I showed that chart on where the world's money is. Oh, wait, I got it right here. Let's, 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 let's take a, just a quick look at something here. Put things in perspective. This is crypto market. 100 billion. These are just companies. Berkshire Hathaway is bigger than the entire crypto market. So it's Microsoft, Al Alphabet, Apple, Facebook, Amazon. The 50 richest people is far bigger than just 
the crypto market cap. But the IMF wants to focus on this as a problem, right? Really? Got to put things in perspective. What's the real issue here? What's the real agenda? Let's see. The IMF mission urged authorities and Valletta to assure companies provide AML. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Despite all these concerns, however, the mission admitted that the growth prospects for Malta remain favorable. That's good. Now, we know that Christine Lagarde, head of the IMF, even said that the world is going to move from using the U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency to something that's digital. They didn't say Bitcoin, but they said digital currency. And for banks to accept that fact. They didn't say we endorse it. They said that this is a reality that we are not going to be able to avoid. One of the biggest things that I am excited about is technology. It's technology. And this whole crypto blockchain stuff is creating not only a financial revolution around the world, but a technological revolution because the blockchain is allowing us to be able to do what the internet would not. And that is the ability to transfer ownership of stuff and data digitally and not having to make copies of it like the internet is. Solves a whole host of problems and issues. Decentralize open source. And with that type of technology is going to disrupt every industry, which means everything that you use is going to be upgraded. The way records are being kept, the way medical has happened, healthcare, food tracking, smart contracts, negotiation, no birth certificates, identification, Tech, uh, uh, mobile, technological, everything is going to be disrupted and new cool gadgets are coming out. You may be, might have heard me talk about blockchain phones. That's just the tip of the iceberg of what else is coming. You know, I'm a dreamer in these aspects, but this time around, I was too young to really be in a position to do anything when the internet revolution came about in the 90s. I was a teenager. I didn't have any resources to take advantage of that. But now I'm in my 40s. I'm 42. And what is happening now is 10 times bigger than the internet. I'm in a perfect position to take advantage. And I am not going to miss out. The cell phone things, it's just, it's just the tip. By the way, those of you who want to eliminate your phone bill for the next five years, the discount of $300 is only for the next couple of days. After that, it goes back up to 600 bucks. So if you want that, you want to jump on and making your order now, ASAP. RemoveMyBill.com and get your order in. I am very, very impressed with it, but I am more impressed with what's coming. Because all you've heard me say is, Pay $300 and eliminate your phone bill. What you haven't heard me talk about is getting paid using your phone. So not only are you talking on the phone for free, but you're getting paid to talk on the phone. How about the ability? No, I, 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 can't, I can't say that other stuff just yet because what, what, what they have right now is good enough. How do I get a phone, Christina? RemoveMyBill.com. I put that in the chat box. I'll type it in there again. RemoveMyBill.com. You only got a couple of days to get it at 300 bucks. But this is the future. See, my entire goal is to bring crypto awareness to the masses. KGX is here to teach the world about crypto blockchain technology and expose them to this industry. 
But the number one way you're going to get in front of people's face is by using what people are using every day that they can't live without. They don't leave the house without. They don't go to the bathroom without. They move from room to room. How many of you walk around your home with your cell phone in your hand from room to room or your tablet or some type of device that you're connected to? Don't lie. <laughs> Everywhere you go, you've got that with you. I was, I was in the Verizon store the other day, and uh, the lady behind the counter was like, you don't have... You don't have a, an Android watch? I'm like, what is that like the the Apple Watch? She said, yeah, yeah. So I don't I don't need it. She says, well, if you have your Apple your your Android watch, then you don't need to take your phone with you everywhere because your watch is the phone. She said, so I don't have to leave it. If I leave my phone in another room and I walk into another room, I got my watch on. I'm good because I'm always gonna get up and go get it again. That is for the SIM card only. $300 for the SIM card. You put that SIM card in the phone. Now, there's, there's publicly released the HTC One blockchain phone, the Siren Labs Finney blockchain phone. Android just announced that they're coming up, uh, or the, the Samsung Galaxy S10 is going to have a blockchain wallet attached to it or some component to it. Also, the same company that is offering these SIM cards is coming out with the phone. This phone, all right, I'm, I'm going to just give you some specs on this. This phone will be able to have a battery that you only need to charge once, and it will charge and last for 30 days. How about that? We'll have memory on it that's like, terabytes of data you will never run out of memory then you put the sim card in that sucker i mean like i said this is the tip of the iceberg that's got me bouncing off the walls who wouldn't want to eliminate their freaking phone bill that's just no brainer anyways that's it for today i should be back tonight i probably will because i haven't been doing crypto talks the last couple of days and we want to monitor the market to see Let's see if has, has it changed any since I've been, been speaking. You're going to see later on today, too, uh, updates uh, as far as our Atlanta Bitcoin boot camp, information on that. And uh, let's see, Green, those of you that ordered a Green machine, I'm waiting on direct word from Green themselves. But if you go into your back office, you will notice some things are happening. You're able to see what your machine is actually producing on a day-to-day -day basis right now. Now, got to watch how I say this. It is always fun to do speculation, you know, based on information that we are given. And whenever I'm given information like that, I always operate on worst case scenario. If 90% of what they say they want to do fails, can I live with the 10%? And if I can live with the 10%, I'm good. So based, and I'm only going to be speaking on factually right now, based on factually what the information is showing in the back office as of right now, I'm not talking about July, August, you know, the first six months. Based on what is showing activity of today, if you have a two cent valuation, the machine is doing a little more than $4,000 a month per machine. If you have a 10 cent valuation, is doing a whole lot more than four thousand dollars a month what if it's at 20 cents 50 cents so and that is like i said the worst case scenario so before i do a video or a special facebook live doing anything talking about green 
I want to wait to the end of this week. I want to see what's being populated in the back office, what's showing up in our wallets. Uh, what is the 12.5 bit billion Bitcoin that was mined between July and December? What does that all look like? But I'm excited to see that movement that's happening in the back office. It's been a long time coming. You know, I keep hearing reports. One machine is going to end up changing people's lives. This is not a get rich quick thing. It's just another investment into your portfolio that can allow you to do more things. Cadillac money. You don't have to work for it. Your asset is producing money for you on a day-to-day basis. And then we have more announcements with our Forex coming up. Crypto trading bot, desk, whatever you call it, coming up. All the automatic stuff. So this is going to turn out to be a very, very good, good and productive and fruitful year for those of you that take advantage of it. If you're sitting back and just watching, I mean, I, I can't do nothing for you. All right, everybody, I'll see you all later on tonight. And again, that is in everything I said is in no way a guarantee, a representation, or anything sourced from green. I was just speculating there. So you don't quote me on Brandon said, no, I'm just playing with some numbers. All right, have a great day, everybody. I will be back tonight for late night crypto talk. The market has not moved too much, still on the downward trend across the board so we'll see what this looks like by tonight patty moore has questions about the green back office so do i patty (laughs) so i'm waiting on word from green before i entertain trying to do a a live and and i'm answering questions because i'm assuming something that i don't even understand I'm just watching it right now, seeing how it plays out. And then we'll get more information later. All right, everybody have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.